Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to continue on that journey of the anti-inflammatory diet, basically eliminating foods like gluten, dairy, soy, nightshades, and lectins. Today we're going to talk about lectins. So let's get right into the video. Lectins are found in legumes, grains, nightshades, and certain seeds. Now, lectins have the ability to bind to cell membranes, in particular, the GI lining or the gut lining. It causes irritation, inflammation, bloating, and pain in some individuals. Obviously, it doesn't impact everyone, but especially those people who are susceptible, like if you have autoimmune disease, or you have underlying GI issues to start with, or you had maybe a lot of antibiotic therapy. Intestinal permeability can also occur, or what we call leaky gut. It can disrupt the tight junctions of the gut, allowing larger food proteins to cross into the bloodstream and cause inflammation. It also activates the immune system in the way lectins are resistant to digestion and can pass the gut barrier and activate GALT. GALT is gut-associated lymphoid tissue. When you activate the inflammatory process of the gut, eventually it leads to systemic inflammation and starts to impact the brain. And brain is, uh, the symptoms of brain inflammation can be like cognitive difficulty, brain fog, or just not being clear on a daily basis. So impacting the GALT or gut-associated lymphoid tissue will eventually impact the brain. Now there's a process called molecular mimicry. This is when your body looks at the food proteins that cross into the bloodstream and mounts an attack. But these food proteins also look like your tissue, meaning it can look at, like your thyroid, your intestinal lining, it can look like your joint. So your immune system has this exuberant uh, immune response to a food protein which causes an autoimmune attack on your body or your self tissue, okay? Now, as you already know, we're running this 14-day anti-inflammatory challenge on our membership site. It will start on December 2nd. It'll be really fun, highly interactive, and it will be very instructional, and it'll keep you, in turn, keep you um, on pace, and it'll keep you accountable in maintaining an anti-inflammatory protocol. So if you're interested, go ahead and join on the link below. The membership site is actually the, cheap, is the cheapest it's ever been. It's typically $49 a month, but we're bringing it down to $29 a month and you'll be grandfathered in into that price range. Now, what do you get for that? Other than this challenge, you're going to get maybe 150 educational videos in there. You get supplement discounts, you get lab discounts, and you get access basically to me. And we'll answer all your questions on that membership site. Let's get into the rest of this video. <clears throat> Interference with nutrient absorption. So sometimes lectins are called what we call anti-nutrients because lectins bind to certain nutrients like iron, calcium, zinc, and other essential minerals. It decreases the bioavailability and also will decrease immune function because you don't have the raw materials to sustain your immune system. Increases oxidative stress and increases inflammation. It also disrupts the gut microbiome is resistant to digestion, which selectively promotes the growth or inhibition of gut bacteria. Therefore, it will throw off your gut microbiome and you can develop things like dysbiosis or, or imbalance of the gut flora, okay? Uh, so dysbiosis or what we call leaky gut syndrome right over here. It's resistant to digestion and accumulation in the gut, allowing prolonged interaction with the gut lining and the immune system, therefore causing more problems and inflammation. So foods high in lectins are legumes, grains, nightshades, and certain seeds, like we mentioned before. But how do we reduce the impact of lectins in our system? 
So if you want to decrease lectin in foods, what you can do is you can soak it. Let's say nuts and seeds you want to soak. You can do sprouting. You can cook it, especially if you pressure cook it for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It'll reduce the uh, lectin um, content of the food significantly. You can also do fermentation of it. You can also add vinegar and lemon juice, if you want, into the cooking process. And that would also help break down the lectins when you eat them. So it's very important that it, this does impact a good portion of the population. So what you want to do is probably eliminate it for four to eight weeks, let's say, and then reintroduce it in the manner of this way of cooking, sprouting, fermenting, and, cooking, um, and using uh, vinegar or lemon juice to minimize the impact of lectins in our system. All right, this is a very important um, nu nutrient um, topic. Uh, it's very important that you understand what an anti-inflammatory diet is. So if you're really interested, go ahead and join our 14-day challenge. Again, the challenge starts on December 2nd. We are going to have that discounted membership fee until December 1st. So if you want to sign up, sign up before December 1st. All right, have an awesome day.